We ain't seen nothing yet. This is just the beginning, just the precursor for what is actually coming. And it's coming pretty quickly, folks. By September, I think things are going to be uh, really starting to be noticed by people. And that's only about six weeks away, so that's an interesting thing. Um, by the end of next year, I think we're going to be living in a pretty different reality. You know, I, I doubt that I'll ever be travelling again. I don't think travel is going to be possible anymore. There'll just be one, one, uh, you know, one national carrier, one international carrier. It'll all be government controlled. They'll want all sorts of tests and temperature checks and all sorts of things in order to enter the plane. You'll have to have your COVID pass. So, yeah, I think now's the time for people to start stockpiling food and to start um, really examining their plan Bs and making sure they've got a plan B in place. That's the grim reality of the situation, folks. You know, you've got to have a plan B. I mean, sure, I see this as a, a huge opportunity to wake people up and a huge opportunity for human freedom. But by the same token, you've got to face the likelihood that a lot of people are simply not going to wake up. This is a war, folks. There's a war going on. It's been waged for a long time. It's a war that's being waged you know, against us by the controlling hand. It's a war of depopulation. The interface that we can actually use to you know, combat this war is the government system, the politicians. They're only able to get away with it through our fear of them and our fear of what they write on paper and call law and we just go along with this stuff. Crazy. It's important to see how society has been set up for this fall. I, mean, I actually called this back in 2008 when I said, you know, World War III has already started, it's a war of depopulation and we're being set up for a massive cull by the uh, codependency, the interdependency between nations, the, the way the supply chains have been set up and the way people have been packed into major cities. We're being set up for a cull and we've got to that point now. now I've been warning people, I've been saying, look, there's a train coming and, you know, you've got to get off the tracks and, you know, people are still on the tracks, still arguing about the shape of the tracks or whatever and the train is hit now. So, you know, either we seize this opportunity to become free or we face the reality that a lot of people simply aren't going to do it, which is why you need to have a plan B. Been a lot of people talk about this transformation ritual, this occult ritual that this whole thing really is. There was a great report that came out by Truthstream Media a couple of months ago, which talked about the transformation ritual, you know, the cleansing, the isolation, the wearing of masks, all to what they do to slaves when they transition them into a new reality. And once you go into that new reality, you can never go back to the old reality. That's what they're doing, folks. That's what they want to do with this whole uh, push for the vaccines as well. And think about the vaccines, folks. There's no way you could develop a vaccine this quickly. It takes years to develop vaccines. You know, and I don't think any of them work anyway. All of them are just full of this ridiculously toxic stuff. You know, even to support the whole concept of vaccines, you've got to support germ theory, which I don't. So, you know, I think there's a lot to be said for that. But anyway, if the virus was really as contagious as they say, so contagious that they're going to make you wear a mask, surely they could just take a sample of your breath. Surely they could just take a little swab of saliva from the corner of your mouth and they could test it to see what viral load you had in your body. They would be able to identify it from that. The fact that they need to stick these swabs all the way up your nose, but they're asking you to wear masks at the same time, this is very contradictory, folks. You look at what Trump's doing, folks. Trump pulled funding from the WHO. He gave it straight to Gavi. Gavi operates with great transparency, and as the coronavirus has shown, there are no borders. It doesn't discriminate. It's mean, it's nasty, but we're going to all take care of it together. Gavi, Bill Gates Gavi. We needed to find the resources to get countries to adopt the vaccine so that every child would be protected. And he's also now saying that um, the vaccine is well on the way and they've got the army there, the military is ready to be deployed to roll this vaccine out to the American people. That's right, folks. Trump is talking about deploying the military 
to push the vaccine. Getting a vaccine remains a top priority. Two vaccine candidates are entering the final stage of clinical trials this month. This was achieved in record time. It used to be years before you were in a position like we are right now. Four other vaccines will enter final trials in the following weeks, and we're mass producing all of the top candidates so that the first approved vaccine will be available immediately. And logistically, we have the military ready to go. We have great people, logistic military people, a wonderful general who's waiting for the vaccine so they can distribute it in record time. That's what's going to happen. So our military is all set to go. We will deliver a vaccine, therapeutics, whatever it is is necessary, and defeat the virus once and for all. You know, a while ago, Trump was saying he wouldn't wear a mask, and now he's wearing masks. He was speaking out against this, and then he backed it. I mean, either they've gotten to him, or he's been a player from the beginning, which I would suspect has been the case. You know, the support that he's put behind Israel. I mean, his daughter's married to Jared Kushner, for God's sake. I mean, you know, and now he's really, really pushing this vaccine, and he's funding Gavi, and he's even saying they're going to use the military to deploy the vaccine. You can't make this stuff up, folks. They're just using anything they can and saying it's a COVID death. Even if you really want to look and, and get you know, biblical about it and look at end times prophecies, it even says in the Bible that families will be torn apart, friendships will be torn apart, um, whole social structures will be torn apart during the end times. And ignorance is a choice these days, folks. I mean, really, if people are not aware of the information out there and they're not aware of what's going on, really, it's their choice. You know, you've done your best. We've all done our best. And as important as it is to continue to attempt to wake people up, it's also important to look after yourself and to get yourself to high ground and to have a plan B in place. You know, if you have to leave your family, if you have to leave your friends behind, you know, be prepared to do that. Because if it comes down to the wire, I mean, that's what it's going to take. The sleeping masses will lead the rest of the people into the slaughter pit uh, simply by matter of course. And we can sit there and, and pull at their hands and tug at their sleeves all we like, but eventually we'll just get dragged in there with it if we don't have a plan B. And, and just be ready to bug out if the situation arises.